Currently in the works is a new feature film in the spirit of the 1980s classics such as No Retreat, No Surrender, Bloodsport and Kickboxer called The Last Kumite. This is a crowdfunded production made by fans for the fans and will be starring some very familiar faces of the action genre such as Cynthia Rothrock, Matthias Hughes, Kurt McKinney, Abdul and Mohammed Kissy, Billy Blanks and more. The movie's soundtrack will be composed by Paul Herzog, who provided the classic scores to Bloodsport and Kickboxer. And the title song, which has already been recorded by the legend that is Stan Bush. I have been enlisted to edit this feature film, which is an amazing opportunity, so please check out the link below and get involved to help us bring this movie to life. The fourth entry in the John Wick series is now out in cinemas, again directed by Chad Stahelski on a budget of around $90 million. Like many films, the production was hit by the pandemic, with an original release date set for May of 2021, but they didn't start principal photography until June of that year. It is the first film in the franchise not to be written by creator Derek Kolstad, with Shay Hatton taking on the duties, who co-wrote part three. They originally planned to shoot parts 4 and 5 back to back, but that idea was scrapped and they focused solely on part 4. But they had begun filming the spin-off film Ballerina starring Ana Diamos, with the principal cast members of the John Wick films making cameos. The film has already been previewed by the press and the reviews have been mostly positive. Total Film awarded it a strong 4 out of 5. Empire Magazine gave it 3 out of 5, saying if you're not up for a film that's nearly 3 hours of wall-to-wall -wall fighting, this chapter might get on your wick. That fighting though is bone-crunching, butt-clenching masterclass. Many critics have complained of its long runtime, and the director did respond to those critiques saying, I don't think we've ever concerned ourselves, we just watched the movie. I think it's the length that we feel is the best version of the movie. We've tried longer, we've tried much shorter. That's what we feel is a good movie. The Guardian, however, were less enthusiastic, giving the film 2 out of 5, writing those who appreciated the original for its brutal, sinewy agility have another thing coming, a lumbering gargantua of a film willing to kill everything except its darlings. For the film story, we open in New York City, where John Wick prepares to exact his revenge against the High Table. He travels to Morocco and kills the Elder, the only individual above the High Table. Because of this, the New York Continental Hotel manager Winston Scott is punished by the Marquis Vincent de Gramont, played by Bill Skarsgård, and he is stripped of his duties as manager, and the Continental is destroyed. A blind retired high table assassin called Kane, played by Donnie Yen, an old friend of John's, is hired to kill him. If he refuses, his daughter will be killed. John takes refuge at the Osaka Continental, which is run by his friend Shimazu Koji. The Gamon's assassins arrive along with Kane to kill John. Ikira, Koji's daughter and the hotel's concierge, orders the hotel to be evacuated and joins her father and John, fighting off the high table's assassins. They are interrupted by a tracker hired by D. Gramont to pursue John, nicknamed Mr. Nobody. But he lets John go after deciding the contract money is insufficient. John heads back to New York and meets Winston. He suggests that John challenge de Gramont to a duel as winning will free him of his obligation to the high table. But John needs to restore his membership to his crime family for this duel to take place. Like many fans of action, the John Wick series is up there as some of the best movies Hollywood are putting out in the genre. The production has all the best talent behind and in front of the camera, so each sequel you know you're in for a good time. I'm always on the lookout for new and creative action sequences that will blow me away and John Wick 4 doesn't disappoint. The plot for these sequels, like the first one, is pretty basic and straightforward. It's not complicated, and basically it's all about the rules of the high table and John trying to get his freedom. It's funny to think John is still on the rampage after someone killed his dog and stole his car. Those events have all been forgotten about as he destroys everyone who steps in his way to get his freedom back. They introduce some new faces with martial arts legend Donnie Yen, who yet again is playing a blind man like in Rogue One. Why does Donnie keep getting cast as blind? Maybe it's to handicap him because he's too good. As you might expect, Donnie is amazing in part 4. He always delivers and is just a class act all the way through the film. The biggest surprise is Scott Atkins, who I knew was going to be in it, but early on I thought he would just play a tough guy who gets into an awesome fight with John Wick, but they put him in a fat suit and got him to put on a German accent. Scott, I think, delivers his best performance to date. It shows he can do proper characters, not just gruff bad guys or straight-laced good guys. So for once, someone gives Scott a chance to flex his acting talents and even some of his comedy skills. He, of course, gets a chance to show off his skills as a top martial artist and does some amazing kicks as he battles John in a packed nightclub. 
there is dozens of great action sequences throughout the film. Amazingly choreographed, and Keanu, who is pushing 60, still shows he can do all the moves and lengthy fights in one take. There was two sequences in the film that came out on top for me. One was Keanu using the nunchucks, I was just gobsmacked by how good it was. It was brutal and so well designed with its choreography. And despite Keanu complaining he struggled to use them, the results show he has no problem. The second sequence was like out of a video game, with the camera looking down on the set as the camera follows John Wick taking out the bad guys with explosive bullets. Seeing the lengths of the blast was just amazing, it was a joy to watch. The photography throughout was splendid, and even the score surprisingly had a bit of a Blade Runner sound to it, which really worked. It made the viewing experience on the big screen really worth it. The lengthy runtime was certainly a bit of an issue for me. I don't mind films being nearly three hours long, if the story is sufficient enough to warrant that. But like the other John Wick sequels, the story is pretty thin and the runtime is extended by the action sequences, which is what you've paid to see. If watching at home, I don't think it would be an issue, but for a cinema experience, you do feel its length, as you don't have the option to pause the movie and take a break or nip to the toilet. Outside of the fight scenes, the dialogue parts feel dragged out with either a long build-up to a scene or lots of pauses between delivering the next line of dialogue. It just felt a bit baggy and could easily be tightened up. Keanu, I think, even has less lines of dialogue in this entry, often saying, yeah, I'm sorry, or I need a gun. With this new character, Mr. Nobody, Shamir Anderson does a great job of the role, as he tries to raise the bounty as he follows John Wick with his dog. But if you had to cut his role from the film, oddly it would not affect the story, and would probably reduce the film's bloated runtime. I think having a shorter theatrical runtime would have been wise, and an extended cut for home viewing. But it's not a major issue that would turn people off from seeing it, as I still had a lot of fun with the film. But I think there is a nice balance of finding the sweet spot for the perfect runtime. If you love the John Wick series, you will probably rush out to see it. The action totally delivers. Everyone does a brilliant job on camera, and Keanu Reeves still demonstrates that he is a proper martial artist and one of the best action stars around. It's difficult to compare all the John Wick films as they all have their great moments, but it's still amazing to me they keep delivering inventive and really entertaining action scenes. And with chapter five being up in the air, I think John Wick 4 does seem the perfect finale to the series. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and click the bell to be notified of my latest retrospectives and reviews. Big thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you want to get involved and gain early access to my content and exclusive videos, then follow the link below.